Today is gonna be color, and especially watercolor day. So this is my, my little travel watercolor kit. I did recommend one um, on the materials list. Usually you have 12 colors. So the colors that, that are recommended are two yellows, two reds, two blues. Um, here we have two greens, two earth tones, and then a sepia and a black. Now that makes 12 colors, that's correct, yes. But the truth is you only need these six colors. The two yellows, the two reds, and the two blues pretty much makes every other color. This is just for convenience and to have them there ready so you don't have to mix one extra step. So what is, why is it two yellows, two reds, two blues? Well, we're gonna find out, but I'll tell you a quick, uh, I'll give you a little um, a clue into what it is. We have temperatures of color. So we have cool and warm colors. So we're gonna try to figure it out. So for the first step, I'm just gonna take my watercolor kit, and this is my travel kit. I do have one that I have here in my studio, which has more colors. And as you can see, I have a whole row of warm, cool, and then a variety of grays and earth tones and greens that I, for convenience, again, use for some of the illustrations and sketchbook work. So for today, I'm gonna to use this one. And what I want you to do is I just want you to pick a brush. As always, you could do this very neatly in your own style. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna catalog my colors very nice and neat on this front page. You could do it in squares, you could do it in circles. And what, what exactly is it? I could actually sketch this little, um, make this as a sketch and just draw it on here and do that. But we don't wanna take that much time, so it's up to you. If you wanna just go ahead and make it um, 12 squares, divide it into 12 squares or any other type of composition, you're free to do that. And I want you to take your color. So just let's go one extra step. And I am just gonna divide this in half. I'm just gonna make a quick pencil line. And this is seven and seven. And I just wanna see what that would look like. And there we are. So I'm just gonna draw a line right through the middle. And then I have to figure out if I were to do this, cause I'm just gonna do this side of the page. If I have to divide it into six, that would be 21, that's three. I could actually leave a margin. So it's 18. So that would be one and a half. There you go, a little bit of math, one and a half. And then one and a half. Once again, if you're one of those people that has to have it nice and neat. And then I'm just going to count 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And that could work, actually. And then just go ahead and do the rest of the lines. But however you decide to do this, it could be just a fun experience, a fun way to just catalog your colors. And it's also, exercise one of all things color that we're going to explore today. So this first one, it's pretty much getting to know your tools and we're going to look at just one or, or two techniques when we use watercolor. Now, if I need to erase some of these, I wanna do it before I bring watercolor in. So there we have it. Now, what happens if you don't have one of these? What happens if you have just a palette with watercolors? Well, I want you to see if you have two yellows, two reds, two blues, and from that you could actually create the, the rest, the variety of colors that we're gonna to try to do here. Um, as I mentioned before, I am gonna be using straight up the colors that I have here. Now, 
As far as technique goes, I did want to show you a few of these. Um, and for that, I'm going to show you before I actually do it on this sketchbook. So you can kind of visualize. Now, this is a previous sketchbook that I worked on, but here it is. So this is the same color. This is the same color, alizarin crimson. So if you have a tube of watercolor and you were just to put it here and then paint it on, that's what it would look like. That's almost pure pigment with zero, maybe just a half of a drop of water. As I add more water, it gets a little more fluid, a little lighter. If I add more water to that, it gets nicer and lighter lot more water and then tons of water so watercolor works in the way and the word i'm going to be using a lot is consistency so the consistency that i that i usually bring out is think of this as butter so here it's actually hard butter but as we begin to add a little bit of water you you notice how the consistency changes into softer you know, melted butter, let's call it. So as we go from butter, it's going to feel like melted butter or cream. Then we're going to get to like whole milk, then coffee, and then tea. So when you think of the consistency of those things, that's what we want to do with our watercolor. So just keep a, mind, a reminder with this. It'll come back. Um, we'll come back to that in a little bit and for my first color I'm gonna take my yellow so I want to just take a tiny bit of water and notice that it's really as you could see I'm using a brush that has this water contained in it so it's beginning to get a little looser if I were to place it here it is so thick if I pull it it won't drip but as I add more water, what happens is now it does drip. So you need to measure the consistency. And I just went through two quick ones there. What consistency was that? Was that milk? Was that coffee? Or was that tea? We get a sense of that on our palette. So what I want you to do is as you fill up these squares or these rectangles or circles or whatever you did on your page, I want you to begin with thick heavy consistency as I paint it on it's going to look a lot darker and with that little bit of paint that I just added there what I can do is I could just begin to bring in just a tiny little just dip the very tip of this brush and I'm going to begin to just touch that pigment and begin to spread it down as I add more and more water until I reach the bottom of this rectangle. Maybe I need to add a little more water. And it almost becomes as light as water. Now, some colors are a little harder to tell, as you can see. So yellow, you may not see it on camera, but there is a shift from light, from darker consistency to lighter. And if I needed to, I could just tap it lift so I'm using a little paper towel to tap and lift just a little bit of pigment if I add it too much and then I could see how much this pigment stains how much it stains the paper if I can't lift too much of it so I created sort of a gradient and what I want you to do is I want you to do this with every single color I'm going right into yellow so this was lemon yellow. Now I'm going into cadmium yellow. One is cool and one is warm. And you're going to see the, once you put them side by side, you are going to see which is which immediately. Or I, at least I hope you do. But when you begin painting with your watercolor, that is one huge important factor that you need to consider for your for your color theory which are your warm and which are your cool pigments so I'm going to add a little more water and we could do this a little faster so 
sort of kind of in a sketchy way as we have done throughout our entire artist sketchbook series but without rushing you know make it fun that's the whole point to make it fun now I'm gonna shift the angle so you guys can see it a little bit better with a little better lighting so if I lift it like this do you have a feeling of which one is cooler which one is warmer so here we have a cool yellow this one feels a little bit warmer now the key to what feels warmer is whatever's closer to orange or towards the reds and we'll figure you know it gets it, it gets simpler sometimes it could get a little complicated for example when you have two blues well they both look really cool or cold so which one is the warmer um, there are some formulas okay so I'm gonna move over to my reds another technique that I want to show you and that you could also play with here is you're gonna add you could add water to that rectangle or square first so I'm just brushing some water on here now is it a lot is it a little that is gonna be another very very crucial important part of your recipe for watercolor how much water on your paper is the right amount because now I have water on the paper and I'm bringing wet pigment this technique is called wet on wet so you'll see how if I just touch it it kind of begins to spread with the moisture that is on the paper and it's sometimes I gotta say is it my favorite technique I do love it wet on wet on wet um, sometimes much easier to create looks and textures so what we're doing here is just having a chance to play and practice with the absolute simplest exercise you could ever think of the way you measure your water the way you wet your paper the way you set up your pigment the way you bring it over and in if you have more than one brush let me go ahead and switch over to a flat brush so I'm gonna do a different brush so this is another opportunity for you to test out different brushes I'm gonna go ahead and do this one wet on wet again but this time I'm gonna use that flat brush there we go so the flat brush made it a lot easier to handle with these corners and sharp edges and now I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of pigment and I could also use gravity so if I were to lift this and tilt it you begin to see how the watercolor begins to drip down using the the wet surface of the paper and gravity to begin to roll down and begin to get lighter and lighter cascading in a way and you could see that so that was an easy way to create a gradient there one big tip that I want to give you today make your watercolors look like you used water don't make them look like you used oil paint or acrylic what do I mean by that well sometimes we can paint too much like this where it's too thick you don't see the paper anymore my recommendation is be the lighter you are the better but don't go way too light although I love it be somewhere between here between coffee and milk and find that nice awesome range of moisture that feels right for you um, what that is hard to tell you just have to play and play and play with it I'm switching to another brush this is one of my favorite brushes this is a number seven round and it's natural 
natural hair. So I'm going to do this one as a wet pigment with a lot of water. So I'm adding a lot of water to it. And then I'm going to bring that over wet on dry and just brush it in. And I'm going to try to do what I just told you guys to keep that level of watercolor where you actually see the beauty of the material. The beauty of watercolor is the water, the pigment, the way they mix on the paper. And the more you can see that, the more you can see the behavior of the water, the better the look. But like I like I said, we all have different different aesthetic uh, preferences. So testing it, seeing if you like it, is going to be crucial. How would you know if you've never done it? And also just charting it like this, like we're doing here, creating these charts to get a little bit of a better sense of what these colors can do and doing it over and over. Also, big tip would be on different types of papers. So getting to know your sketchbook, amazing. But also what these colors can do on different papers. It's a big part of you becoming a better watercolorist. I mean, it's in the word, watercolorist. How do let water do what water does and you're the one controlling which color how much water and which technique so in the end you are under control you are completely in control although sometimes it may feel like you're not like water's doing whatever it wants. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going through my watercolor case here. I'm going to begin to add a little more fluid. Just tapping the water and just maintaining one level of consistency. Most of these I'm keeping at coffee, milk consistency. So I'm just bringing in... I have a good feel, a good range for the moisture I bring with this brush. And I see, I know how much I need to have it run and pretty much feel a square like this without having to go back into the water. And done. Make sure I clean my brush and go into the next color. Now, as you get a, a better sense of a better feel for the paper, for the brush, for the moisture, you're going to begin to consider how what technique is working better for you now what techniques are there we just sampled two of them and that's pretty much the beginning of the variations for everything we saw wet on dry wet on wet right everything else follows those two it's either wet on dry or wet on wet but the variations that you can do to the simple concept of wet on dry or wet on wet is where you need to begin to pay attention. So how many times do I dip my brush to bring more water if I'm actually doing wet on wet? Um, and how is that final look? So retracing your steps and beginning to get a sense of how you handle your technique and being able to pretty much recreate it at will. is very very important so here i'm doing another wet on wet 
and I'm just pretty much dabbing this paint in on the wet surface of the paper. But I could do so many other things. What I was saying just now, I wet the paper. I wet my brush. I grab some pigment so it's wet on wet. But if I were to dip my brush once again into the water and bring in just more pigment, I'm going to bring wet on wet on wet. So how much water I bring in now on top of the water that's already there and the pigment, you're going to begin to see things moving, pushing, shifting. So what is important for you to realize is, just like in nature, water is always looking for the lowest level. So it's going to pull or puddle wherever something is lower. So if I were to lift this and put it the other way, water is going to go to this edge. If I were to hold it this way, it's going to go down. If I hold it up, there goes the drip. It goes back up. And you can actually see it moving. So sometimes that's an obvious one. But when you have water and there's a little just... I don't want to call it a puddle, but there's a little level of water. And let's call it like a little sandwich of water. So the thickness of it. And I bring in my brush with more water than is already there. That water is going to push the water that's on the paper out of the way. Think of it heavier water pushing lesser water and pushing the pigment that it has with it. So that's when you're going to begin to have things. As you begin to see this dry, you see little marks of water pushing the other pigment there. You see it a lot here. And also the type of pigment that we're using, it's going to show. Because some pigments are heavier, so they settle in faster. And some pigments granulate more. So this is all just simple things covering very basic, very, very basic tips and techniques for you to manage your watercolor and begin to discover your pref your preferred uh, way of applying your paint. I'm going to do this one a little bit looser. Just dab it on. And then let it run down. And you can actually manage a little bit of the bead here. What I mean by the bead is that little bead of water. And you could just have it bring it down, kind of controlling it as I help it brush. So what happens when the paper dries a little faster in certain areas? That water and the pigment stop. Unless the weight of that water and the level of consistency can drip through the dry paper. Otherwise, it'll just stay there. It'll create an edge. So you see it maybe a little bit. You could still see how it's dripping. And you see the actual pigment roll down with the water. Okay, and we're almost done. Final two. I'm going to do these two once again. Wet on dry. And you notice I stuck with my favorite brush. Adding more pigment. And I didn't really experiment much with other techniques, other brushes. But it is a great excuse just to fill up a watercolor paper, a sketchbook page, so you can play with different brushes, different techniques, and different paint application methods. And I love this color, that sepia. And finally, we come to black. And it doesn't seem like there's a big difference here, but it is just your typical ivory black. And there we have it. So cataloging your colors, and I would wait till this is dry and I probably would add the name of the color on here. That way, when you are painting 
and you need to go back to your reference, all you got to do is open your sketchbook and immediately you get it. Sometimes you can even get inspiration just by looking at a chart like this. You go, ooh, I want to be here today. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to look at how color is going to inspire you and, and make you make selections just based on color. All right, so I'm just going to wait a few seconds for this to dry just a little bit. And it's going to, it's going to take place really fast. And I'm going to select an, my next page. And this paper does dry a little bit faster. You can actually see how some of it is drying from the outside in. And one of the techniques I love is to add a little extra water when it's at this point. So it pushes that pigment away. And you can actually see it happening. I want to show you that here. So as I just added more water on top of the pigment that was already drying, you see how the water just pushes it. And it pushes the water and the pigment out of the way. So that creates textures. Here, let me do one more. So knowing the level of dryness of your paper. See, now this may be too dry for this next one, but I'm going to try it out. I'm just putting water on the tip of my brush and dropping it in. And you can actually still see it's working. So as I touch a little more water and it's still not fully dry, it's going to continue creating textures. Now, if it's fully dry here, it's not going to do much. If anything, it'll lift a little bit. So knowing the perfect moment, the timing of the level of moisture, and look what it did. It created a nice effect that you could actually use for your paintings. And there are infinite ways of creating textures like that.